if I understand that I have to make a person or a girl attracted to me first before I start connecting with them, then I'm not going to actually say those things until I know that I'm actually on her radar, until I know that she's actually attracted to me. What's up, man? Patrick James here, and welcome to another episode of Raw Dating Advice. Welcome to the new studio. I cannot wait for you and I to start really pumping out a lot of videos and live streams inside of this brand new studio. And let me know in the comments down below, what do you think? In today's video, we're gonna cover something called Social Intelligence 101, how to be more charming in conversation. You guys have really been seeming to love the 101 series of videos that we've had on this channel so far. We got Attraction 101, Social Intelligence 101. I'll go ahead and link in the description box below all the one-on-one -on -one videos that we have on this channel so far so you can check them out after this video but in this video i want to talk about specifically how to be more charming in conversation and the reason why i call it social intelligence 101 and not attraction 101 is because this is stuff that applies to literally every area of your life yes you can make women more intrigued with you and more interested in you and obviously more attracted to you in the moment by doing what we're going to talk about today but more importantly think about how this applies to other other areas of your life. Think about how you could use this with a boss or maybe someone you're trying to persuade to do something or maybe to sell a product of yours or any area of your life where you want to make a positive impression on other people. All right. And so the first one is something that I see often times with people who are meeting other women for the first time. Maybe you approach her in a grocery store or maybe uh, it's just an awkward situation for you to be in. And one of the things that really hurts a lot of guys in social situations is they feel awkward. They don't feel comfortable in the moment and they try to hide that by trying to maybe use a pickup line that they heard online somewhere or they try to hide the fact that they're not feeling completely comfortable in the moment. And here's the thing. If you are not acting congruent to how you feel in the moment and your thoughts, words and actions are not aligned with how you feel and how you're portraying yourself to be in the moment, then people get this weird energy off of you. For example, if you approach a girl in a grocery store and you, you told her like, like a playfully challenging line like oh we could never be together right but you're like super nervous and you're stuttering over your words and you're speaking under your breath well obviously there's a disconnect between your thoughts words and your actions and that disconnect to her she's not gonna go oh this guy is not feeling congruent he's not acting congruent she doesn't think like that she just get a we gets weird energy off of you and goes oh this guy's a creeper and then she completely writes you off and so one of the first hacks to being more charming in conversation is just calling out the elephant in the room. Call out the awkwardness. One of my favorite books on just social skills in general is called The Like Switch. I forget who, who wrote the book, but in The Like Switch, he calls this a statement of empathy. It's called a statement of empathy because when you can call out the awkwardness in the room, what you're actually doing is showing this other person that, hey, I understand social intelligence and I understand because I'm empathetic to your situation that right now there might be a lot of awkward tension right here because I'm a random guy who came up and talked to you. So for example, if you approach a girl and she's kind of a little off put by the fact that you approach her, you take a step back and you go, hey, I know this is a little awkward. It's not every day that uh, you know I, I walk up and talk to random people, um, but I figured you were really cute and I wanted to come over and say hi. If you only said, I thought you were cute and I wanted to come say hi, yeah, that might get you to like, uh, maybe on a scale of one and 10, maybe like a seven or an eight. But if you wanna go to a nine or a 10, use the statement of empathy. Hey, I know this is awkward. I don't do this every day. You probably don't get talked to by random guys approaching you every day, but listen, I thought you were cute and I wanna come over and say hi. Just that one little statement of empathy before it lowers her defenses and it makes her feel like you understand how she's feeling in the moment, which makes her subconsciously trust you more. So start using statements of, the, of empathy. The second thing is stop trying to fill the silence. Most guys feel awkward when there's any dead space, empty space in a conversation. I personally love silences in conversation, especially with women, because silences, if you're feeling that awkward tension, she's also feeling that awkward tension. But what you have to understand is that an awkward silence in conversation is not your fault and it's not her fault. It's a completely natural part of any normal conversation. If you and I started talking to each other for an hour or two hours, it's very likely that at some point 
point in that time, there would be an awkward silence. Why? Because conversational topics just change. Now, can you actually improve your conversational skills and become more free flowing in conversation to make sure that awkward silences don't happen? Yes. Of course, but the real charming men not only embrace the silences, but they bask in them. And more importantly, some of the more advanced guys will actually create silences intentionally. You know, one of the live streams that we did last week, I was talking about the fact that if you slow down your pace and you embrace silences between your words, oftentimes that negative space in conversation, those silences alone, create tension to you it might feel like awkward tension and at first for her it might feel like awkward tension but what you must understand is that tension whether it's awkward tension or any type of tension in conversation oftentimes is the building block to sexual attraction so start embracing the the tension and the silences in your conversation and become more comfortable basking in tension now i understand that most guys if you've never really uh, opened up your eyes to the idea that hey maybe tension is what actually makes this girl interested in me because tension brings her attention attention to the moment fully and now i can fully have influence over this person and actually charm them that's what the most advanced guys understand is that tension and silences are actually your friend and not your foe so that brings us to the third thing which is stop planning what to say stop planning what to say now if you're just starting out and you need uh training wheels for conversation that's great you should learn kind of what should be said in moments like this but the moment that you start using a training wheel as a crutch is the moment it starts working against you and i think a lot of guys get um they they lose sight of this right and it's very easy to lose sight of one of the things that i teach in my book and i teach in a lot of different places and you've probably heard about this before because it's a very common uh conversational game especially in the dating industry and it's called the questions game now the questions game itself especially in the way that i teach it is so effective especially when you ask the right questions in the right order to make her feel attraction for you but it's almost so effective that it's to a fault. Like if it's, if you use something and it works once and then you use it again and it works again and then you use it again and it works again, you're not gonna wanna stop using it, it, using it. That's just natural, right? But the moment something that's a training wheel becomes a crutch for you is the moment that you start stalling your progress in game in attracting women. And so what I want you to understand is that in the short term, if you're just starting out, planning out what to say will be great. But long term, if you want to become the most charming and charismatic version of yourself, you have to understand the fundamentals of what makes people drawn to you and what women are actually uh, attracted to in conversation, and then use that as a framework rather than you know the the rigid structure of the exact words that I can say and the exact words I can't say. For example, one of the videos I highly recommend you go back and watching is the Attraction 101 video, where we talk about what women actually respond to in conversation. And here's where I give you the example of like the framework versus actually what to say if you can uh wanted to connect with someone and i said hey uh you know oh you like basketball i like basketball too right we're connecting with each other but if i understand that i have to make a person or a girl attracted to me first before i start connecting with them then i'm not going to actually say those things until i know that i'm actually on her radar until i know that she's actually attracted to me so maybe rather than trying to connect with her i would actually do the opposite i would break rapport with each other by saying something like oh you like basketball oh we could never be together you know because we would always fight on the basketball court over who's better right now i'm sparking tension and i'm actually disqualifying her in a place Playful way and so understanding the framework will actually tell you kind of what to say in the moment but in general you want to stop planning what to say because the moment that conversation doesn't go how you planned it out that's the moment where now you literally have nothing to say because you didn't foresee this coming You wanna be adaptable so you can adapt to whatever situation arises in the moment. And this is just gonna come with experience, which brings me to number four, one of the most charming things you can possibly do right this second, and that is using someone's name in conversation. Now, Dale Carnegie, who wrote this book called How to Win Friends and Influence People, it's an amazing book, and I highly recommend you uh, check it out if you want to become more charming in conversation. But one of the key principles in that book is that the sweetest sound that anybody can hear is their own 
own name. Everybody loves themselves. Everybody likes, likes to talk about themselves. That's their favorite topic. But more importantly, everybody loves to hear their name. And just to prove this, I want you to think back to your own life right now and think about some of the most charming people that you can think of. What you might realize is that they use people's names a lot in conversation. And especially if you want to get better at attracting women in conversation, one of the best things that you could possibly do is just start saying her name at the beginning or the end of the sentences that you're you, that you're saying to her when you address her. So for example, we can never be together is, you know, it's an okay, challenging, playfully challenging line, but Kate, we could never be together. Now it feels personalized to her. Do you see the difference there? So using someone's name in the sentences that you address to them is gonna make a world of difference, at least in just getting their attention onto you. And when their attention is onto you, now you can fully influence them with a lot of the things that we talk about on this channel. So, so far, before we get into the fifth one, here's a quick recap. One, calling out the awkwardness, statement, statements of empathy. Two, stop trying to fill the silences, bask in the silences, bask in the tension. Three, stop planning what to say. The moment your training wheels become a crutch is the moment it starts working against you. Four, use people's names in conversations. The, your name is the sweetest sound that you will ever hear. And just by someone addressing the sentences to you and using your name in conversation, even if you have to say their name every sentence, like they won't know it. They'll just go, oh, this guy's kind of charming. Like it's kind of just like a vibe that they get off of you, which brings us to number five, which is the nonverbal part of charm. And that is your eye contact. Not just good eye contact. People always overthink eye contact. Do not overthink this. What I like to think is I'm just gonna maintain strong, dominant, laser focused, and relaxed eye contact for as long as I can, right? Most guys, they can't even hold eye contact. Let's say if you talk to someone for a minute, you might spend 30 seconds looking around, you know, looking up and down, uh, you know, doing one of these deals, retreating back into your head, thinking about what to say. But when you're in conversation with someone, you want to practice holding that eye contact. Now, if you're not used to holding strong, dominant, laser focused, yet relaxed eye contact, it might feel like there's a lot of tension for you to be able to do that. You might feel like, oh, this person's gonna think I'm weird because I'm not breaking eye contact, right? But here's what I want you to understand is that most girls themselves are not good at maintaining strong eye contact. So if in general, you think to myself, to yourself, I'm just gonna hold eye contact and not really break it, then what you'll understand, it, what you'll come to find really quickly is that usually they won't even notice because they're not gonna be able to hold the eye contact with you, all right? Every time I'm talking to a girl in a bar or on a date, if I just hold that eye contact, you'll find that they start breaking eye, t eye contact and they won't even realize that you're holding it, but they will feel the difference. Some of the most charming people I've ever met, when I'm talking to them, whether it's in a group or just one-on-one -on -one to them, they have their full attention on me right because when someone gives you their full attention it's almost like a charming trait because it makes me feel validated for like being able to earn their attention. And so when you are able to give someone your full attention while you're talking to them, while they're talking to you, it feels like a powerful thing, right? It builds a lot of tension, whether they realize it or not. Now, here's the distinction. Strong, dominant, laser focus, yet relaxed is the, the key word, relax here, because a lot of guys might hear this and they might go, all right, I'm gonna hold eye contact and I'm never gonna break it and I'm not gonna blink and I'm gonna look intense and I'm gonna look constipated. That's not what we're talking about here, right? So what I want you to do right now after this video is go into the mirror and I want you to practice what I call the seductive gaze. And this is literally chapter three in my book, The Seductive Gaze. And I even give you pictures of charming individuals in this book. And I give you examples of what not to do and examples of what to do, right? And it really comes down to having like a slight squint and a sly smile on your face while you hold that dominant yet relaxed eye contact, all right? That's the key because when it's relaxed and you have a sly smile, now it's like warming and inviting, but it's also strong. It gives you a big presence and it makes people feel kind of a lot of tension around you. And that tension is the building block to them becoming attracted to you, especially in a man to woman conversation, right? And so practice your strong, dominant, yet laser focused eye contact and don't break it. Just keep it there and people will feel the difference immediately and you'll notice the difference in how people respond to you right away. So that said, if you got any value out of this video, if you resonated with any of this stuff, drop a thumbs up and let me know in the comments down below, which one of these are you going to commit to trying out this week and definitely keep us posted on your progress. Now that said, if you're not already subscribed to the Raw Dating Advice family, hit that subscribe button. And if you wanna grab my book, 107 Proven Ways to Get the Girl, these are currently free 
while supplies last. Just go to howtogetthegirlnow.com and we'll send a book just like this to you anywhere in the world. And lastly, we do have an upcoming live boot camp. And if you want to attend, we only have about 10 spots left and these will go by fast. So in the comments down below, I've pinned a comment and you can check out the link there for all the information you want. And if you want to come and grab one of these last spots, just use that link in the comment down below. That said, I'm going to get out of here, man. Hope you enjoy this one. Peace out.